Okay, it looks like we're live. We're just waiting for some people to join us. Um, also, I don't. I forgot to say, if you do have another device, um, make sure your volume's turned down. And we are live for Art Foamy Fun Friday. I'm just um, hoping that um, people will find us in a minute because I don't see anybody here. So I hope we're actually live. <laughs> let me <laughs> let me see if I can find. My, it wouldn't surprise me if I'm not. Oh, um, yay, we are, because <laughs> um, Michelle Elizabeth is here, and Joni is here. Oh, my gosh, thank you so much. You are, you're getting the gold star tonight. Oh, my gosh, I've been so nervous for this. Um, Dee is here, Maxie Moon. So, Maxie is my daughter and um, works for us, too, so she'll be here, uh, hopefully, answering any questions or just kind of overseeing. Oh, my gosh, we have a great group already. Um, Rini is here, Sue, Carmen, Seahag, Michelle, which actually Michelle gets the gold star tonight. <laughs> and Patty Euler is here from the Queens Inc. Ashley is here. Lynn, Mary Lynn, Monica, Janice, Gina, Catherine. Oh my gosh, Cecilia, Susan. Oh, thank you all so much for joining. And I know um, we'll buy, probably have um, other people joining us um, as we uh continue and i just want to welcome everybody and thank you for sharing your time with us on this friday and i want you to welcome our very special guest Lori siebert oh my gosh i've been waiting for this moment so thank you for being here with us and welcome to the art foamies family <laughs> i don't always talk like this <laughs> i am so excited and i have so many more ideas for more and more stamps <laughs> So, yay. Oh my gosh. It's so funny. We were talking this morning and um, I think we actually um, left off a couple of words. <laughs> so, yeah. look, oh well. words coming soon. <laughs> oh well. Oopsie. Anyway, I know we've been just back and forth, really busy. We've been working on this for how, gosh, how long now? It. it well, you, oh, we, you started asking me about doing this quite a while ago and then I didn't get my act together for <laughs> All but finally did and now I'm like so excited and now I have like a million more ideas so well keep them coming because we everybody here loves loves new stuff and fun stuff and this is art foamy fun so we promised you some art foamy fun I hope that um, everybody has had a chance to see Lori's beautiful collection I really um, can't say enough uh, how much I love it. As you can see, um, <laughs> I've been stamping everything I can get my hands on. And um, and like Lori said, I've really been probably bugging her for, oh gosh, I don't, ever since we met, sort of met. Um, at, we met through, I think, Linda Barutha. Yeah. And, and, but we really didn't like really connect. And then I think you joined one of my Instagram challenges and we were talking more then. And then I had you judge one of our challenges. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's been a few few years of developing. Yeah. This. But, you know, I do have to say because um, and, you know, we'd love everybody would love to get to know you a little bit. So if you want to just talk a little bit about yourself and your art background, um, I think I do want to say it really shows your design background in just uh, your imagery and your professionalism. It just is amazing. So fun to work with you. Plus your sweet, nice person. Oh. But, <laughs> but I mean, just being able to get your images and they just translate so beautifully. So um well, I think that does come from the graphic design background for sure, because, yeah, I mean, that's where I started as a graphic designer. That's what my degree was in. Um, and then I did that for a long time, branding, uh, collateral, all that stuff, all the stuff. And then um, about 15 years ago, I started licensing my art. But there's always been um, an illustrative quality to my work, even when I'm doing graphic design. And there's always been this thread of florals and color and birds. Those are my, my go-to things because there's just, I find that there's just an endless amount of inspiration in nature and the shapes and the forms and the colors and the patterns and I mean, it's just, it blows my mind. We did a 
we did a floral challenge on Instagram in May and we were, you know, just researching the, the, the flower shapes and leaf shapes. It just blows my mind. Yeah. So, <clears throat> well, but I'm a endless source of inspiration and, you know, well, you, um, just are, you're just a bundle of energy with your work is just so fluid. And I just, I loved going through your Instagram. I hope everybody here definitely follows your Instagram because it is, um, always full of just inspiration and color and, um, always something fun to share, uh, your challenges. I know you've done quite a few challenges with other artists and, um, the, they're just amazing. They're so fun to follow. I'm super sad. I haven't ever since that first challenge, I have not been able to participate. Um, just because, you know, it's, it's a lot of extra, you know, it, but oh my gosh, the work created is amazing. Oh my God. It blows my mind. So I challenge every other month and we always have really great judges and this they're really generous. <laughs> You know, like Lilla Rogers was our, our one of our judges and Janine Bengal from Uppercase and I mean Lisa Congdon was a judge. We have some really great judges and they they award everything from books to courses to mentoring calls to actual product. I mean, they're really, really generous. So in the community that happens during the challenge months it's really it's really cool because everybody supports one another and cheerleads one another and the work is just astounding and I mean I I'm just a real artist groupie so I love seeing how people think and so that's partly why I do them yeah I love seeing like you give one you give one prompt and the um the the way people interpret it, it's just endless. And I just think that's so cool. Yeah. It, um, and the variety, like I, can, I could not believe, um, and I'm sure it's grown even since the first one, the response to that first challenge was uh, amazing. And I, I'm sure it's just growing and growing because you collab with uh, like many other people, right? Yeah, I do. I collaborate. Um, I co-host with different people each challenge and, um, you know, depending on the time of year and the theme of the challenge, that really drives how many people par participate. Um, but even when it's like this last challenge we did, the the color uh, I wanted to do it so bad. Well, we real we featured a lot of women artists, and um, everybody really loved the learning part and learning about these women and. You know, women artists often go overlooked, and it was just really cool to do a deep dive into all of their stories and learn more about them. So yeah. I think <clears throat> you'll see more of that in coming challenges because um, I'm sort of a research uh, nerd, and I I often said that I could probably be in a research position and just look at books, magazines, and online and research different topics and be very, very happy. <laughs> as long as you could doodle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, it's so interesting that you did that too. And I did follow along a little bit on that last challenge, which I loved. So uh, um, Maxie Moon and I do a monthly, a monthly little, um, episode called art history in my patreon and so many of the artists that you covered we had done but just seen but i still learned stuff and seeing the way that you put together with their i was just it kind of was just a re-inspiration for me so super fun um yeah i can't wait to see more That's great yeah so um i want to show everybody your stamps so i'm gonna turn they don't need to see my face it would um, I'm going to show some of the samples and I don't know, have you been able to work with any, uh, do you have anything at all that you wanted to share or show or wish I did. The only thing that I was able to work on, I've been filming a class all week and that's been taking like a hundred percent of my time. And I did use some of the stamps in that piece, but I, I, I'm not allowed to do it. Quite. Okay. <laughs> no, it's um, <laughs> but what I have planned as soon as my schedule opens up a little bit, I'm dying to, to stamp on clothing. So I bought a couple of t-shirts um, and a couple other pieces from the Gap Outlet that I want to, 
I want to use these to stamp on. That was kind of one of the things I had in my head when we were designing these, because yeah. I'm sort of a I fashion designer wannabe. Because I can't, I can't sew, but I just love looking at really cool fashion. So I just want to, I want to play with these on on clothing. Well, I can't wait to see what you do. I did get this little um, t-shirt dress at Old Navy, and it was like seven dollars, like. Or, you know, it was like 14 and then it was half price. Yeah. I just used a few of your stamps and the GAC 900. Do, is that what you use too? Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm gonna, yep. I'm, you know what? I said I was going to turn the camera off my face and that's what I'm going to do. Let me do this. Oops. But not your face. <laughs> there we go. Um, so this stuff, this golden GAC 900, if you mix one to one, so one part this, one part acrylic paint. Um, it will turn anything into your fabric paint. Um, and that's what I use just with regular acrylics and your stamps to make a dress that matches my art <laughs> or matches your art, match my art made with your art. Um, and I, so Hi. this is, this is, uh, I've been dying to try this and I know I can't get the whole thing in the frame right now. Um, but this is on stretched canvas and I was telling you earlier before we came live, I wanted to do a larger painting, like mixed media type painting with art foamies um, as the under layer. But I just, I don't know. I think that this finally inspired. So this is 16 by 20 and I know you can't see all of it, but um, it finally inspired me to do it because your stamps were all, you know, nice, large, bold. And so I really just use them as under painting and then, um, over stamped them multiple times and this is the result I'm super excited about it that's and really, I hope I hope you are too that's really cool now I I have to admit that I, I I make my own stamps a lot but I'm not nearly as versed as you are on how to use them well and I love I love on the bird how you said you you stamped that yeah stuff. So let's do it real fast. I mean, I want to show the whole collection first, and then we'll uh, we'll do a tiny demo. I did also have to share your sticker. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. So when you order Lori's Art Foamies, you know you get the Lori Siebert sticker right on there. And um, luckily, I hope you did not see, we spelled your name wrong on so many things on accident today. We've already gone back and fixed everything, but I was like, oh my gosh, check this sticker. Oh God, I didn't. It was right. <laughs> Thank, I go, I sent it to Lori first, but she never said it was wrong. So hopefully, so I went right, one of our wonderful customers with the eagle eye, she goes, I think you spelled Lori's last name wrong. And I was like, no, no. So I went and grabbed the sticker first thing, praying all the while. And luckily it was right. So, okay. So anyway, let's pull out the collections. I'm super excited to introduce to you. Um, this is, okay, Max even gave me a little cheat sheet so I wouldn't be super lame up here not remembering all the names. These are called Garden Details and there are two sets. So, so I think you should all know that Lori has 10 SKUs. So most of them though are sets. There's only two individual stamps that are singles and I will share, share them all with you now. So th um, these two sets are called Garden Details, and they each include four stamps. So this is Garden Detail Set 2. Sorry, I started with two instead of one, but you get um, her signature bird. And I love these because um, they could be stars, but they can also be a smattering of, you know, wildflowers. I love that because you can make a pattern. So I, I actually use that one in the painting that I, I did uh, filming this week. I really like that one. Yes, I do too. Um, and you can see, I don't, well, let me turn this back around. I used it partially. Oops, sorry. I just, I don't, I'm not good at, um, <laughs> at these pluses. Okay. So see, I just used, um, like part of it, like just three of them right here. Uh huh. And you can see right where, oops, yeah, holding it up to the camera. Like you can see the camera now. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, you just paint the ones that you want, right? So anyway, that's Garden Detail Set 2. And then this is Garden Details Set Number 1. Love these two. I love just the 
whimsy quality of them. And again, sizes are fantastic. Oops, they're out of the frame there. So that's Garden Detail Set 1. Again, keeping in mind that you can paint or color just portions of the stamp. So, you know, you don't have to be obligated to use it in its entirety. I am going to keep up the little bird because I will do a little demo with that one. We also have these sets, which I'm totally in love with. I have not used them um, really to, to their fullest capacity yet, but I'm super excited to. Um, and these are called Torn Flowers, and there are four, and they are sets of two. Um, so you get the Worn Wildflower. And again, for those of you who have been using Art Foamies for a while, you know that these sort of positive negative sets are so awesome and useful and fun to, um, you know, get makey with. So I think that, to start the sets I want to play with first on the shirts I want to make. I love the... I love the pause neg thing. Me, so I'm super fun. And I'm going to, I will show you something too before, uh, before you leave that I think you'll really love. I mean, maybe you've seen it, but maybe not. So um, this one is called um, Vintage Violet. And again, two part harmony. This is called Torn Tulip. And then this one is Deconstructed Dandelion. Ooh, don't you love our names? <laughs> Maxie and I worked really hard on those. You do. <laughs> okay, so now we have, um, ooh, the Bold Botanicals. I'm super excited about these. Oh my gosh. So these are some big, big boys. Um, I love them, love, love them. Uh, I can see these definitely on clothing, on walls, you know, you can see this is my larger journal. So it's a nine by 12 journal. So that fits really nicely. And also some actual wall art. I would like to do some framed pieces with these. Um, I just haven't gotten there yet, but I did experiment in my journal doing a couple of kind of monochromatic pieces. So you could at least get an idea of what they look like stamped. So those are really, really fun. They're pretty. Yeah, that would be really cool on a wall, I think. Yeah. Like so, even, even in black and white or gray, you know, do them all in gray and repeat them. Yes, I'm dying to definitely do some black and white. Um, and that's, I actually want to do some black and white with this, but I really think I got the idea from you because um, I started to say this earlier and then I interrupted myself, which I'm great at doing. I um, love looking at your Instagram feed and then be like, <laughs> Lori, let's do this and it's a circle a corner of the picture. So I'm pretty sure one of these uh, came from that idea and it was all in black and white. So I think you did a big canvas with just black and white and I love it. I'm working on that. Um, I was just working on it this afternoon. Well, that there's some more pics, lady. I will. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, a couple of people um, ha like have said they really like the big stamps. And the, I want to say these are pretty much the biggest for those of you who do. Um, followed like Elizabeth St. Hilaire and had seen our launch. She did a couple birds and branches that were quite large, but I'm, I'm pretty sure these are the biggest ones that we've ever done. And I love it too, because keep in mind, you can just use portions of them again. You don't, you know, have to use the whole thing. It's in, in its entirety. Um, but I just think they're really beautiful. So, and we only are, um, I do, we do have a couple of more of these in, uh, what do you call that in the arc in the reserves because we're um we are going to make these limited editions i just want everybody to know i mean not li like we're going to at some point we will discontinue these and then bring out a couple more because the other ones you sent are just as gorgeous but they're just so big that we wanted to sort of release them a little at a time you know i want to do like one of those in the center of a shirt I think that would be really fun. So that is that. And then um, last but definitely not least, we did come out with a couple holiday sets, which I was super excited about. And so I'm going to pull both of these out so you can see um, how fun they are. And have a couple samples stamped with them. So these are three-part harmony. <laughs> And these are um, 
kind of is similar to, you know, the the positive negative, except for this time, the back, um, the, the, the large stamp piece, um, and I can't think of what we even call it right now. I'm sorry, my brain, I'm having a brain freeze, um, has, you know, imagery in it. And then what we did, so this is a plane, comes right out there, um, and then did a, a piece that, now this, does not fit in there. It is a, co a corresponding piece or a complementary piece. It's not made to interchange. Okay, so there's that, and then we, um, this one is called Star Shine Set of Three, and then this one is Christmas Tree Lane, which I love both of them because even though they are sort of holiday, um, they just don't scream Christmas only. You know, like I really feel like. This uh, star set could be for Hanukkah. It could just be for New Year's. It could just be celestial. Um, but of course, you know, depending on how you treat it and color it, um, then it could be more Christmassy and kind of the same with the Christmas tree one. I just, anyway, so here I did stamp them out using a little watercolor and then a, and using your piece, even though it is um, kind of literal, you know, it's a tree with the star. It has these patterns on it, and so I did go ahead and use it to sort of fill in some of the other spaces. Uh, question. So did you put your watercolor down first and then stamp white top? No. So do you want to see how it works really fast? Because you're going to uh, just love this. Okay, so I went ahead, and um, you can leave this in uh -huh. when you're coloring, or you can go ahead and take it out. I took it out. And um, let me grab a, I'm going to just get a piece of printmaking paper. Um, nice, like 90 pound or watercolor paper works nicely too, but I have printmaking paper right here. I'm going to just take a little spray bottle here with water and I'm going to spritz it up. Um, I don't want it like soaking wet. I just want it damp enough to catch my color. And I'm going to take um, a couple, I have some watercolor sticks and I have some Derwent ink tents sticks. Uh -huh. I'm gonna, let's see. Oh, I want to use, I used kind of this green gold color. Let me, it's kind of a yellowy green or yellow gold. So, and you know what? I'm gonna turn off my overhead light really fast to see if it helps with this glare. Oh, it went too dark. Is it too dark now? It might be. Let's try that. Mm, all right. Sorry, my lighting in here is horrible. I think that's nice. Is it okay? Okay. So anyway, it's still a little bit damp there. I'm going to take my Derwent stick and I'm just going to run it all the way across. If it, if it has a dry spot, just give it a little spritz again. And this is kind of a, oh, I don't know, this color blue is sort of like a cerulean type blue. I don't really know what it is. And then I have this watercolor stick that is a thalo blue. I'm just going to scrub. I don't know if scrub is the right word, but I'm just going to kind of go around some of my spots here. And, you you know, you can do more or less, whatever. I'm going to also take and run around the edge. And give it another quick little spritz and just, I do see some bald spots. If you have um, a lot of color, kind of like, glo I don't want to say globbed up, but you know, like if you have any color that looks like it's a little bit uneven, you can always take one of your scrap or stamp buddies. Um, and I think I sent you some of these, right? It's a rigid piece of plastic with a little piece of foam yeah. sometimes. We also, um, we sell scrap buddies, which are just little, what they're called, scraps of them. And they make great little wands and little applicators or if you do have a large stamp which i am going to show you the reason that why you would use one in its entirety like this but for now i just need all i'm doing is really trying to sort of make my um watercolor stick so it's not too bunched up in one area and you know just get a nice little great gradient whatever okay so i'm going to give it a little spritz again i'm going to take um, my paper and I'm just gonna 
take it like it's almost to a gel plate instead. I'm not going to take the stamp to the paper. Oh, wow. And well, I didn't get it as dark because it wasn't probably as juicy as the other one. And also, this isn't watercolor paper, but <clears throat> you get the idea. So now I have all my saved whites. And so now I can either go and uh, to be honest i i feel like i left i did leave my um piece in on this one um instead of trying to line it back up and stamp it in there but the nice thing is is that if you want to do that you still should be able to and you could line it up pretty easily i could also um cut this off now and line it back up i will try to take it this way what a pretty card would card or wrapping. Yes, yeah, so I made a bunch of wrapping paper with this also. And what I love about it, okay, is that, and I was able to line that up pretty well. So that's how I got that like bright white around it. And then I just took my other little complimentary stamp and did kind of the same thing um, using some different colors. And again, this does not line up exactly. It's not It's not the same. It's just a compliment stamp, okay? So uh -huh. just stamped it right in there. and How pretty. Wow. And then you can, you know, smush your... Uh, I think on this one, I actually did take some of that yellow or my green gold and get some other little highlight spots in there. But that's the gist of how that one was done. I do want to show you, though, really quickly the... Um, the wrapping paper that I made, okay, and it's very kind of crude because I did it really fast. Like, I I literally took like five minutes, and so I just got this um, craft wrapping paper from Dollar Store. Okay, it's this stuff, and I I believe Maxi Moon, are you still here? How much did this cost? <laughs> I mean, I asked her to pick it up for me at the Dollar Store because I knew they had it. All it is is lightweight nice. paper, and I just took white gesso and your um, Christmas tree lane stamp. And the great thing about it is it lines up so easily. Okay, sorry, I, ha I have painter's tape on here. But um, that I was able to just stamp it four times across, okay? going, And I know you can't see this whole thing. Four times across and three times down. And that made a nice square. And I was able to just cut it right out and have pieces, uh, you know, this would wrap a, you know, nice size gift. But um, it just made it so fast and easy and cute. And then, of course, you could have such a cute little matching card to go with your wrapping. Newt. <laughs> cute. Okay. So I think that's, oh, but last but not least, I, don't, I have to show you really quickly my, my upcycle project. I had some canisters that I was about to throw away. And I don't know if you do this. I get such good ideas when I'm about to throw stuff away. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not going to throw them away. I'm going to use Lori's stamps. And I'm going to do my canisters. So now I have my dress matches my canisters. That's adorable. This is so cute. So these are old timey. Um, they're, they're aluminum canisters that I got. And uh, all scratched up. Like they were all oxidized and scratched up. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to give them to the, you know, good or whatever. Put them in a yard sale. And then, of course, I said, no, these will look so cute with Lori's stamp. So I did them. Um, and I don't know if I'm done yet. But, you know, that's just how it goes when you're working on stuff. Um, so. So. Oh, I'm putting I'm putting my blue thumb on them now. Don't you like that? That's a great <laughs> do for little gifts too. Yes. Well, I'm not using them for actual canisters. I'm just going to use them for like art stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I could see like filling that with cookies or candy or whatever would be a really cute gift. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be a lot though. You have to really <laughs> love somebody to give them that much cookies or um, okay, so, oh my gosh, let's read the comments just for a minute. I don't know, can you see comments or not? I can't. You can't, okay, because you you don't have, um, so let's just see, does anybody have any questions or thoughts? We would love to hear from you. Um, let's see, 
KP, if you have time, can you do the positive and negative to demonstrate? Yes, and I actually have some things already stamped out. Um, Lori, is there anything else? I don't want to keep you all night. I know you're tired and you have a lot going on, but um, I would love it if you would talk a little bit about your retreat or anything else that you have coming up. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm going to... Um, pull out the samples that I made um, with the positive negatives cool. and uh, and we'll listen to you chit chat about because I want to hear all about Mexico oh <laughs> I am so excited about that one so he's like more I retired and I'm thinking that oh now I'm just going to teach everywhere that I really want to go um, so I have a lot of retreats coming up. I'm actually leaving for one in France on the 1st of September this year, but, um, so I'm teaching for Dion Woods. I don't know if you know her from the Turquoise Iris. She's doing a retreat workshop in November in Branson or not, not November, October. So I'm teaching there. And then I'm teaching, uh, I'm so sorry. I don't want to Branson, Missouri. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't know about that. I have to go on your, is it all on your website? Uh, I don't know if I have that one on the site. I need to add that actually. I've been promoting it in my newsletter and things. And um, it's the turquoise iris. She's running it. I need to add that to my website. I'll do that anyway. And then I'm teaching a weekend uh, at Camp Create in November. Last I heard though, there was only one spot left. So cool. where's that at? Where's Camp Create? That's this um i'm not sure what it is in kansas that's no okay i think you're cutting out a little bit oh can you hear me yeah okay and then i'm going i'm teaching with my friend michelle allen at, in san miguel in mexico next february which i'm so excited about oh that. my gosh i want to go so bad i've been i want to go there so bad and again France for Paragord retreats next September and there may be other ones that pop up in between and then I'm probably gonna a few years ago we st I started what is called Art Biz Jam with a friend of mine and we had we hosted a live re workshop um, every year pre-COVID and that is more business focused um, and it's about artists and how to make money and how to license your art we may do that live again next October. So I'm Wow, so you're already like working way out. <laughs> yeah. Well, with licensing, I'm always working like at least a year ahead Yeah, um, with developing collections. And I'm still doing that and um, a lot of like, well, not a ton of licensing. I've really kind of narrowed down to a few clients that I really love working with to do that. And what else? So tell us where we can find, you know, like some of your other products and what other stuff that your art is on. Uh, well, most of the products, I, I don't sell my products on my website. I probably will start doing pop-up sales of my artwork, our paintings and things. Um, but most of my life, I don't even know where they're being sold because the manufacturers, right. they all the marketing I'll walk into gift shops and and I you know I get surprised. I'm like oh there's my stuff oh there's my stuff right so, <laughs> that's so fun yeah it is fun uh, my friends love that <laughs> um so yeah I'm just doing a lot more teaching I'm painting more I want to do more large canvases uh, so, and do more, like I said, pop-up sales of my art on my site, on my website and just doing stuff that's fun and collaborations like this with you. I mean, yes, we like fun stuff. Um, so speaking of liking fun stuff, this is some of the things that you can do um, by having these negatives. I don't know if you were able to sort of watch me as just call as Lori was talking. I was just coloring these with my watercolor sticks now of course I can stamp them individually okay or I can put them back together and stamp them that way if I put them back together 
and and stamp it this way of course i will uh use it sort of how you saw me uh put the paper to the stamp the cool thing about this is doing you know is that you will get that little bit of saved white um you know by keeping the stamp in in its um you know in its backdrop I don't, I didn't wet it, so I might have needed to spritz it. But again, one of the things, and I say this all the time, uh, you know, that I love about Art Foamies is that they are really easy generally to line back up. So yeah, it didn't come through too well, but you can see that. And of course, remember this is watercolor. So, act, you know, I can take a little brush and activate that if I want to. Oh, fine. So um, that's that one. And then I was going to also just really quickly demonstrate for you, um, or in, and Lori, if you need to go, please feel free. But I was going to just do this on a little tiny piece of canvas and show um, everyone how I was able to achieve um, <clears throat> the, the, the look that I had on my painting. <clears throat> and I just have a little... Uh, canvas paint, you know, just a regular canvas panel. I'm going to take a little bit of acrylic and I'm just, I want to put a base coat down just so that I don't have just the plain uh, canvas. So I'm just put a little bit of acrylic paint down. Are you at Nova color? I'm so sorry. What kind of paint is that? Is that Nova? Uh, no, it's a golden, oh. just a uh, heavy body, and it's a little thick. It's, it's pretty color. It's a little thick right now because um, I don't always remember what the lids are for. So I just, I, I, like I said, I just want a little base color here. Yeah. We'll make this short and sweet. Um, also, um, let's just ask a question. We will go ahead um, each week. We ask a little question. And uh, if you type your answer into the comments, we'll go back later and we will choose a random winner for a demo pack. And of course, for this demo, since we did um, one of your torn flowers and now we're going to do the bird, that's what will be included plus a little piece of art. Okay, so I'm going to, you know, if I'm here in my studio and I'm just by myself, I would, of course, let this dry um, fairly well, you know, whatever. It's nicer if your acrylic paint is good and dry because then if you make any mistakes or you need whatever, you can wipe it away so easily using a baby wipe if your base coat is dry all right so but i'm not gonna really have time to let it dry so i'm gonna just pretend <laughs> i'm gonna take my scrap i'm taking a little black gesso and my scrap buddy and i'm gonna load it up <clears throat> um the nice thing is i will tell you that even though your bird on this side does have a little bit of detail in the wings um, um, really, that's the only detail. So if you want to have it facing the other way, of course, you can just turn it over and ink this side and then they can be facing each other. And if you want the same little detail, of course, you can just remove the paint off of the wings and have the same little nice. you know, similar detail. Okay, so I'm going to... I want to do a whole set of birds. Please do. I was As I was doing this, I was like, oh gosh, I wish we had a couple more birds. <laughs> Uh, birds are one of my things too. All I right, love it. So this is just, I'm not trying to do any kind of obviously composition or anything. I just want to show you how I created um, and over stamped and got that bird looking the way that I did. Okay. So that's just my under stamping. Okay. Although, I mean, that's great. Let this dry. I'm going to clean it off. Now, um, for your art foamies, for those of you who are new to art foamies, you do always want to clean your acrylic paint off of your art foamies, okay? It's not going to ruin them completely if you let it dry on there, but it does make the surface of the foam different if you're 
acrylic gets crusty and dry on there. And then if you later, if you want to use watercolor on them, it doesn't really accept it the same way. So when I'm done, I will take my art foamies to the sink and wash them with soap and water. Okay. And uh, right now we're going to be using <clears throat> lighter colors right over the top again, because it is just um, using that as my little underpainting. And I'm going to step away um, from the camera just for a second because I, I do I'm going to blow dry this just for two seconds okay okay so do you always do a I'm sorry say it again <laughs> you always do a gesso layer um no this um not always no and this was already pre-gessoed okay I mean just those can't well, said you use black gesso so I didn't know if you did that for your base oh well I want a dark underpainting so like it really depends if I want I could use a white or you know if I want to build on top of light colors that's nice too so say I had a very dark background like a black or dark blue maybe then my underpainting would be white you know I would use white gesso yes I will use some sort of base to then continue my over stamping so for that this one I did stamp in the black and then I went back over it again. And this is something uh, useful too. And uh, my fingers are all black now, but uh, lots of times if my scrap buddies uh, are like this, I'll just cut it in half. And then I can use this one for my other color. I'm gonna use a little bit of white gesso now. And this could, it's not because it's gesso, it's just because it's white um, and if I had my titanium white, I would use that too. So it doesn't, I'm just want a little light color. And um, actually for this one, so on that, I wanted my bird to sort of be like gray-ish, but I didn't want it to be, I don't know. I just wanted sort of a bluey gray because uh, of the background color. So I actually mixed it with a little bit of Payne's gray, which I don't know if I have right here. Because for some reason, I thought it would be a great idea to clean up before. <laughs> oh, terrible idea all the time. Oh, you can find anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the truth. But everybody that knows me knows I never can anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to mix here a little bit of my white and Payne's gray. So do you clean your stamp buddy? with soap and water yes you can rinse them out a lot of times i try to get as much of the paint obviously because you don't want your acrylic paints going down the drain you know but um i will wipe them out as much as possible and then yes wash them and you can reuse them they'll, they'll get stained but they'll still as long as the paint's not crusted in there you know so a little bit of Gray. And remember, it's kind of fun to model your color, um, you know, to mix and smush some color right on your stamp, too, because you're going to get those nice little, you know, gradients and variations <clears throat> right in there. Yeah, I like how you add like a little bit of a peachy color, it looked like. Yes, in the yes, that will be my third layer. Oh. So, and again, because it is cut out right to the stamp, you really can line up so nicely. And even, I will tell you, even if it's not perfectly lined up, um, if it's a little offset, it's still, it works, you know? And um, even on, on my painting that I shared with you, I, the tail kind of moved a little bit and did something kind of weird, but it looked still fine. So, and the other thing that I love, see it just sort of starts to give you that little nice outline. <clears throat> And I always tell all my students, like, you can't fake the layers. You have to go through the process of layering to have a layered look. So, you know, and the fact that this only has that little amount of detail, it's okay because then you're just going to continue to build. I did, I think, use a little bit of peachy color, like you said, um, which I had just a little bit of my that orange. Probably too much, but that's okay. Um, and a little bit again of my gesso here. I'm thinking I need to do a whole art foamies retreat now. Okay, can I come? Yeah, I'll be your assistant. <laughs>
Okay, um, let's see. I did do this sort of in his face because what I did, I was like, what color should I use for a bird? So I literally did go online um, and Google images of birds. I wasn't trying to copy any specific birds. I just was sort of like, oh, well, if it had a little peachy or pink, where would that be? So I just, and it was around, you know, the the face sort of area and then maybe a little bit of darker I don't know you could do a blue or a darker gray or something on the belly there maybe a little you know in the tail too I don't know just keep playing with it and remember if you do something that you don't like it's okay because you can over stamp again now, you didn't spritz that again. Do you need to spritz all the time? No, no I don't usually spritz with acrylic. I only spritz with watercolor. Oh, I can okay. spritz a little bit with acrylic if it's kind of gummy or dry, but generally the spritzing is with the watercolor. Okay. So now, um, you know, maybe I want a little, What I can do it again. I maybe want the beak to be a little bit darker now. So... Let me go back in with just a little bit of black right back on that beak. And this time, well, you can, of course, you know, paint right on. There's no, um, nothing saying that you have to do it on the stamp, but you can add your little, you know, eyeball, your little detail eye um, directly to your stamp, or you can do it right. So pretty. On his eye. So oh, pretty. I love it. Ta-da! So hopefully that will help you, not necessarily you, Lori, but all of you collectively, um, have a little bit more fun with your art foamies. <laughs> so fun. And so you can see, it gets well, just all these nice little subtle, sure. you know, subtle variations. And of course I could keep, I could go back over again one more time and you could also add other little details if you want to, or you can just stop there. We'll just stop there. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. All right. So let's see here. Ah, oh, well, let, I'm trying to get this off. And every time I just make your face giant and click on the wrong thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, all right, I have to ask a question. How many of you have already been following Lori? All you have to do is type answer. And then type how long you've been following her. If you, if you're, if Lori, if you're just meeting her for the first time, say I'm just started following her tonight. If you've been following her for ten years, say ten years. But you have to say answer in the comments first in order to be selected um, for the random drawing for the demo pack. What? Also, don't forget that um, if you use the code Lori's AF. And that's L-O-R-I-S-A-F, all in capitals. You will receive 20% off of Lori's Art Foamies for the whole weekend, okay? Nice. All right. I want to thank you again so much, not only for um, hanging out with me, just for your time, and also for saying yes and designing a line of Art Foamies. Well, I can do more. So hopefully yes. So well, and I can keep doing them. Yes, yes, of course. Um, so, yes. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding? You can just keep doing them for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anyway, um, you can, and later, if you want, you can go back and read all these fantastic comments. Everybody loves you, including me. And, um, again, thank you. Have a wonderful, oh, my gosh, wonderful retreats and classes. Keep in touch. I'll be following, and I hope everybody else will be, too, for all of your challenges and um all your new art foamies too next challenge is in september do you, are, is it a surprise or i'm co-hosting with us cloud again and it's going to be a color challenge oh nice okay that was that was the first one you did right uh no i did a bunch before i started co-hosting um i when did i start these i think in 2019 maybe um, so I've been doing it for a while. Oh, I just, I thought, well, the first one you did with Este, wasn't it Color, color I Combo? Yeah. Yes. And is this yeah. going to be another Color I Combo or a different name or? Well, it's going to be that, but we always have a different little twist. Um, so yeah, this okay. is a juicy one. We'll be watching for it. Maybe you can do an Art Foamies challenge one day. Oh, well, there's 
idea. I like <laughs> we'll talk. Next. All right. Well, I love you to the moon and back. Thank you so much. It was great spending time with you. Um, I want to thank everybody. We had a great group. Um, thank you so much also, as always, for joining us for our foamy fun. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Let us know if you have any questions. Mwah. Bye, Lori. Bye.